Yugi Bros! What's going on guys? It's Yugi Bros with a brand new format today. Jinzo, actually yesterday, Jinzo officially became legal and I'm looking for a big shakeup in the format. I'm sure you are as well. Uh, definitely happy that this actually got legalized. I understand that in Paper Yu-Gi-Oh! only I think Europe has it. We don't have it over here in the States, but uh, fear not, Paper Yu-Gi-Oh! barely exists, and if you're gonna play in any speed duel tournament, I think the online tournaments are where it's at currently. Uh, the beautiful thing here about Jinzo being uh, legal is that the nine card trap lineup that almost every person plays in every relevant meta deck most of the time is Triple Zoma, Triple Nightmare Wheel, and Triple Dust Tornado, but with the release of Jinzo, none of those are viable while Jinzo is face up on the field. So, uh, hopefully we're looking for a bit of a shakeup. However, it's not like Jinzo just absolutely wrecks the meta. There are cards like Cocoon of Ultra Evolution, which still bodies Jinzo, Offerings to the Doomed, which might now see more play. Uh, you also have cards like Nudoria already in the game and Dark Variants that can just blow it off the field. Uh, for the lessers, Yomi Ship, Man Eater Bug, and Old Vindictive can get rid of it as well. Yomi in the sense of it has to have been attacked by the Jinzo, or uh, destroyed by battle I should say, by the Jinzo. Uh, and then you also have cards like Santa Claus and Lava Golem, which can spot removal it, and basically kaiju it off the field. Uh, if your opponent is playing just one Jinzo on the board only to play around your Lava Golem, Kaiju Claws might actually see more play, so there's always that option as well as other random options as well. You can also just beat over the card, as simple as that. If you Sphere Karibo it, you know, put it in defense, swing over it, there's that. But I but I digress. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, my favorite deck in Speed Duels, and that is Relinquished. We're going to have Relinquished play against Dark Moth. Uh, in this situation, uh, it's just us playing the Jinzo. Uh, I will have more matchups in later coming in the week where both players are playing Jinzo. Uh, but it's just, it's literally just Dark Moth versus G uh, Relinquished, but Relinquished has access to Jinzo, which gives it more playability uh, through any anyone's trap lineup as well. Uh, we're also playing Ritual Sync, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ritual Ceremony, our favorite skill for Relinquished, uh, where we reveal a Relinquished once per duel and add the Black Illusion Ritual. Uh, we're going to start off here summoning it and taking their monster. I've learned a lot against playing against Dark Moth, taking their monster even though it comes out it's going to make Relinquish zero. Uh, does put them a step behind. Dekoichi is one of the most powerful cards in, in speed duels. And I know this sounds crazy, but drawing one card in f speed duels where your deck is 20 to 30 cards and also having then a 1400 beat stick, sometimes and a lot of the times in Dark Moth can be so momentous for the game. It gets you so far ahead, gives you an extra body to deal with. 1400 also gets uh, over face down to Koichi's and face down to Doria's. So it's just, it's it's an extra free body. It's a draw. It's everything in one. That's why the card is so expensive right now. Uh, they're going to draw into Gap. They're going to use their Paranoid on our Relinquished, but we will Offerings our Relinquished. And so their Paranoid goes. We get our Illusionist Faceless uh, Magician back. They're going to use the skill to draw a card with Paranoid. They draw into Nightmare Wheel. So in addition to the draws that this gives you, the draws that Dekoichi gives you just puts that deck so far ahead. That's why I feel like taking their face down, whether it be Nidoria or Dekoichi, is usually pretty good. However, we can't draw because of Offering, so we are forced to pass. We could have put Illusionist in attack mode and swung over its defense, um, but we didn't. And that's where we're at. And now they're going to Nightmare Wheel our boy, uh, which is a little unfortunate. Um, and then they will set another monster in. We draw into Jinzo, the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend. We tribute summon our Faceless Magician for Jinzo, and then our Faceless Magician's effect allows us to summon back Relinquish in defense mode. Now, keep in mind, uh, Zoma and Nightmare Wheel, Zoma, or I'm sorry, Nightmare Wheel is now negated. Zoma then goes back to the trap zone, and it's essentially just going to sit there for the rest of the game until it gets removed from the field because it is negated. It's just kind of floating in space. It's the same with this card. It's like if Call of the Haunted, for example, uh, let's say you bring back a Teller Knight off of Call of the Haunted, and then you overlay it for another monster. Call of the Haunted doesn't leave the field because the monster wasn't destroyed. It just kind of sits in limbo until it leaves the field by other means or what have you. That's why Teller Knights are so interested in playing Call, because when they summon Trevor, they can bounce the field and bounce the Call of the Haunted to their hand. 
So in this situation, these are just going to sit here dead for the remainder of the game. And we get a relinquish as well. We're going to roll to see which one we absorb. We end up absorbing their Nudoria. Kind of works out for us because if we absorbed the Koichi and then ran into this, they would pop the Jinzo. These wouldn't come back online, but they'd still get rid of the one thing that's kind of slowing them down. We're gonna then have Jinzo swing into Dekoichi, they're gonna draw a card, too bad it's Dust Tornado, while well, Jinzo's on board, that's not gonna do anything, and they draw into another Dekoichi. They're gonna set the Dekoichi and the Dust Tornado, I'm not really sure why you set the Dust Tornado in this situation, because unless you know you can get rid of this, you don't wanna lock your back row, you have a lure, the lure might get you something else that you need. Um, we draw into a double Cyclone, which is actually kinda cool here. We'll hit the thing of Relinquished Absorbed and their face down, which is Dust Tornado, then we'll have Relinquished Absorb their other monster. And this is where things get real dicey for us and them. We have Jinzo swinging for a full 24 and they can't stop us with anything. However, they do draw into Nudoria, they will set the Nudoria and pass. We draw into Sonic Bird, we will normal Sonic Bird, add a Black Illusion Ritual from our deck to our hand, activate the spell, sending the Sonic Bird, summoning a Relinquished, and absorbing their monster. Alternatively, we could have sent the other Relinquish just because it's not really doing anything on the board, but hey, whatever. And we have Jinzo swing in for game number one. There's a big difference when you have uh, negate all traps on the field on board. And I think Relinquish can put out a free tribute fodder monster for Jinzo quite easily in the sense of Relinquish. Uh, but also, you could, uh, you could go ahead in the future and play Gentlemander, which may see a lot more play in the future in random decks because it'll summon itself to the field, and assuming then they can't get rid of it, uh, you have a free Tribute Fodder monster for your Jinzo in the following turn. Uh, Gentlemander lock is also cool for that. They're going to start with a defense of two face downs. We draw into our Black Illusion Ritual. We'll reveal our skill. We'll get another Black Illusion Ritual. Just thin the deck a little bit. We will set two and pass. We can't really do anything super offensively, and we don't want to burn the Sphere Karibo for no reason. I'm going to flip Nudoria here and swing for 12. We're going to Sphere Karibo that, so now we have it set up so that when we take their monster, it's no longer face down, and we gain its stats. We're going to banish the Sphere, summon the Relinquish, uh, but on the summon, however, they offerings it, so no luck there. And uh, now we can't banish, we can't tribute anything else for this one, so we're forced to pass. Uh, they don't draw because of offerings, they're going to switch Doria once again to attack mode, and we'll take the 1200 freely this time. We draw into Senju, we will normal our Senju, add a Relinquished, activate Black Illusion Ritual, sending Senju for Relinquished, and having Relinquished take the new Doria, then we will swing in for 1200. They unfortunately will Nightmare Wheel, but we have the Twister for that, so we will pay the 500 to get rid of that as we start doing some damage, however the downside is now we don't have a direct out to their Parasite Paranoid. On the end phase, they Dust Tornado. The worst case scenario is we could have Offerings Dust, but now we can't. And they are free to do what Dark Moth does best, that's put a Paranoid on our monster, send it with their skill, summon a Moth for free, then use the other effect to throw a Paranoid back into the deck, get a free extra draw card, set a card, activate a Lure of Darkness, draw into two cards, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, they have enough for game. <laughs> so it's a quick one and one. But let's see what we can do in game three. We're gonna start with a defense in three back row. Typical Dark Moth turn one. We're going to start with Black Illusion Ritual, we're going to pitch that, we're going to chain Double Cyclone. We're going to hit their middle card being Offerings and summon Relinquished. We're going to then have Relinquished absorb their monster. And then we're going to pass. It's not a great turn one, but you kind of have to compromise where you can. On the end phase they're going to flip Zomo. They draw into Dust Tornado, they set that, they switch Zomo to attack mode and pass. We draw into Relinquished, convenient, we'll use our skill, Reveal Relinquished, add the third spell from deck to hand. Then we'll activate that spell, get rid of Relinquished, for a Relinquished, and take their Nudoria. I'm sorry, we'll take their Zoma. <laughs> then we'll try to swing, but then Nightmare Wheel. I'm gonna set Nudoria and pass. We're gonna draw into the third Relinquish, really quick here, that we hit all three of them without. We've just hard drawn all of them. We're gonna activate Black Illusion once again, sending this to summon the other one, also getting the Nightmare Wheel off the field. 
and we'll take their third monster. They draw into Perfectly Ultimate, they can't do anything with that, so they pass. We draw into Jinzo once again, so we'll Tribute Relinquish, summon Jinzo out for free and swing for 24. All of a sudden this Dust Tornado, well it's not going to do anything anyway, but it can't now, period. They draw into Dekoichi, they'll set that and pass. We draw into Double Cyclone, can't do anything with that, but that's fine, we'll swing into their monster. They get their extra draw. They draw into Allure, they'll activate Allure of Darkness. Drawing two and be forced to discard their entire hand. At this point they'll use their skill, throw back a moth to try to draw a card. They draw into Dekoichi, they'll set that and pass. We draw into Sonic Bird. We don't have a way to search anything, but it is a free beat stick. And we'll have Bird swing in, because we know anything they set in defense mode has less than 1400 defense. They draw into Offerings, which would be a hell of a draw against this Jinzo, however, they can't stop us. And that is game. They draw actually into Paranoid, so they actually would have had Paranoid and Offerings, and we wouldn't have been able to stop them going forward, so they clearly would have won the game, sending this for their Moth, Offerings this, and swinging for 35 to the face, assuming they weren't too too worried about our back row. Oh, they definitely weren't, never mind, they hit Dust Tornado. So, it was a close game, but unfortunately, or unfortunately for them, fortunately for us, we came out on top. Uh, we drew the cards uh, a little bit faster than they could. And so this is the little bit difference that comes with the format now. Jinzo does give it an extra edge, gives a lot of decks an extra edge, but it's not like, like I said, it's not like it just murders the game. We have so many outs in the form of this combo, this card, and the cards that I mentioned earlier in the game, as well as Nudoria. Uh, so it's not like Jinzo's just gonna straight murder the game. I would love to see what the speed box does uh, When it actually drops with the 192 other new cards that we're going to get on top of Jinzo uh, But until then uh, I guess we'll find out as far as the moth deck goes It's been the same thing we've been playing except one less gap So two moth one gap three paranoid three Dekoichi three Nudoria two allure uh, three Zoma, three Wheel, three Tornado, the two Ladybug in the side, the two Offerings, and the two Twister. But as far as the Jin's Linquish deck goes, uh, we play Triple Relinquish, Triple Senju, two Sonic Bird, two Faceless Magician, three Sphere Karibo, two Jinzo, uh, three Black Illusion Ritual, two Double Cyclone, and two Offerings to the Doom. In the side deck, we play the one Lava Golem, the third Jinzo, not sure if this is necessary or not, but against something like Burn, I just didn't want to take a chance. One Warrior Elimination, because Warrior decks, Conflict Warrior is still very, very prevalent. Uh, and I feel like we get more side deck space now because Jinzo deals with stuff that we don't actually need to play, like a third Twister or the Dijin to make this unaffected by traps. Uh, so we have this, we play a third Offerings, and we have two Twister. I might change one of these to the third Double Cyclone, not sure exactly yet or not whether we do that. Uh, but the Double Cyclone is always strong in something like Relinquish to get rid of the card equipped. Uh, but guys, this is the Relinquished deck that I have for the beginning of Jinzo format. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I know there's a lot more we can uncover uh, with Jinzo being in the format, but this is just the very, very beginning. Uh, this will be a format going forward. I know it's Jinzo week, so we're going to showcase Jinzo decks, but expect to see a lot of him in the coming future before the speed box. Other than that though guys, I'm out. I'll see you guys later. Like, subscribe as always, click the notification bell to get all of our latest updates, and I'm out. Peace.